To many outsiders, the idea of Amish people using electricity sounds like a contradiction. Aren't they the ones who reject all modern technology? But that's a misunderstanding. The Amish don't reject electricity itself. They reject dependency on the public power grid. What they actually practice is a carefully considered, spiritually grounded form of selective technology, where electricity is used, but only in ways that align with their values of humility, separation, and community. For the Amish, the issue isn't whether electricity is inherently sinful. Rather, it's about how it's delivered, who controls it, and what it invites into the home. Accepting power from the government-run electric grid means running wires into the house, and those wires, in turn, become conduits for everything the modern world brings. Televisions, internet, entertainment, distractions, and eventually, spiritual drift. The Amish fear that once electricity flows freely, so will the influences of pride, vanity, and worldly comfort. So they draw a line not against electricity, but against being plugged in to the world. Yet despite refusing government electricity, Amish families still run farms, operate businesses, and carry out daily life with remarkable efficiency. The secret lies in independent power sources, ingenious systems that give them just enough energy to do necessary work without losing control over their values. One of the most common sources of power is the diesel generator. These small engines provide enough electricity to run milking machines, charge batteries, or operate tools in woodworking shops. They're loud, simple, and temporary, used only when absolutely necessary, and shut off when the task is done. Because they're not connected to an ongoing supply, there's no temptation to keep them running for comfort or entertainment. Another favored system is compressed air, or pneumatic power. In many Amish machine shops, air compressors are powered by diesel engines and then used to operate everything from lathes to sewing machines to water pumps. This system eliminates the need for electric motors entirely. It's physical, hands-on, and self-contained, just the way the Amish prefer it. Battery-powered lights and tools are also common. Some Amish communities allow the use of 12-volt batteries, the same type used in cars or RVs, to power small appliances, lights, or fans. These batteries are recharged using generators or solar panels and remain disconnected from any external grid. Solar panels, propane, and mechanical power, the Amish energy mix. While the image of the Amish often brings to mind kerosene lanterns and horse-drawn buggies, the reality is that many Amish families today embrace a surprising blend of modern yet controlled energy sources, always on their terms, never tethered to the outside grid. In recent years, solar panels have become more common in Amish communities, especially among those engaged in farming or small business. Mounted on rooftops or ground stands, these panels are used to charge 12-volt batteries that power lights, water pumps, or even electric fences for livestock. Unlike grid electricity, solar power doesn't bring the world in. It remains off-grid, silent, and manageable. Its limited capacity forces intentional use. It's not enough to run TVs or microwaves, but it's perfect for a barn light or ventilation fan. Solar use varies by community. Some stricter orders reject it entirely, while others embrace it as a clean, quiet way to meet basic needs. The key difference? No reliance on government services, no monthly bill, no outside control. The electricity produced belongs to the family who uses it and no one else. Propane is another essential part of the Amish energy puzzle. It's commonly used to power stoves, water heaters, refrigerators, and lamps. Propane refrigerators, despite having no wires or electric circuits, are remarkably efficient and serve many Amish homes year-round. 
It's not uncommon to find an Amish home with a propane stove, a battery-powered light, and a hand-crank washing machine, all working together in harmony, free from modern overreach. But perhaps the most traditional and admired form of non-electric power among the Amish is mechanical energy, simple, timeless tools powered by hand, foot, or animal. Push mowers, foot pedaled sewing machines, hand crank mixers, and treadle saws are everyday tools in many homes and workshops. In some areas, horse powered treadmills or water wheels provide rotational force for grist mills or other equipment, especially in communities that avoid even solar or diesel alternatives. This system of power, carefully measured, decentralized, and physically connected to the user, fosters a mindset of discipline, intentionality, and gratitude. There's no flipping a switch without thinking, no passive indulgence. If you want power, you work for it, you maintain it, and you decide whether it serves God or serves ego. The Ordnung and the Bishop – How the Amish Decide What Technology is Allowed the Amish don't live off-grid simply for survival reasons. They live this way to protect something far more important, the spiritual health of their community. Every decision about energy, whether it's a battery-powered light or a solar panel, is filtered through a living code of conduct known as the Ordnung. This isn't a written law, but an oral tradition handed down from elders and interpreted by each district's bishop and church leaders. The Ordnung guides how an Amish community interacts with the world, and it varies subtly from one group to another. What may be allowed in one district, say, solar lighting in barns, might be completely forbidden in another just ten miles away. These differences are not contradictions. They're expressions of communal discernment shaped by context, local leadership, and spiritual priorities. When a new form of power becomes available, whether it's a new kind of generator or a more efficient solar panel, it must first be brought to the bishop. He and his ministers discuss it often over months, asking questions not just about its usefulness, but about its potential to erode core values. Will it lead to vanity, to individualism, to dependence on outsiders or disrespect for tradition? In many ways, the Amish don't ask, does this make life easier? They ask, does this make our lives more God-centered or more self-centered? This radically different standard creates a culture where restraint is honored and limits are embraced. This process also allows the community to remain united. There is no Amish tech rebel sneaking solar panels into attics. If a family defies the Ordnung, they risk serious consequences, not out of legal punishment, but from communal discipline. The unity of the Church is sacred. In extreme cases, persistent disobedience could lead to shunning, a heartbreaking step meant not to banish, but to call the person back into spiritual alignment. Even with permitted technology, accountability is continuous. For example, if propane lights start replacing family prayer gatherings with late-night reading, or if solar batteries power devices that cause distraction or pride, the use may be revisited. Amish life is not static. It's dynamic and watched carefully, not by government rules or software updates, but by the eyes of a tight-knit, faith-bound community. Because of this structure, the Amish don't fear technology as a concept. They fear what unregulated use of power does to the soul. For them, electric current is not neutral. It's a force that must be contained, respected, and always subordinate to God's law. Amish industry and innovation, powering businesses without the grid. While Amish homes are often serene and simple, their workshops, farms, and small businesses reveal a side of Amish life many outsiders never see. Highly skilled, low-tech entrepreneurship powered by the same selective energy principles that guide their homes. 
In fact, many Amish families generate a full-time income using electricity they create themselves without ever connecting to the government power grid. Amish woodworking shops are a prime example. These shops often hum with energy, not from electric sockets, but from pneumatic air systems. A diesel engine outside the building powers a massive air compressor, which distributes compressed air to tools like saws, sanders, and drills. No electric wires run inside. The tools function like those in any modern shop, but they're entirely off-grid and controlled by the craftsman. Amish women also run home-based businesses using selective power. Bakeries may use propane-fueled ovens, while lighting is powered by battery or gas lamps. Sewing machines are often treadle-powered, requiring no electric input, but capable of turning out detailed quilts, dresses, and baby clothes with speed and precision. Some communities allow small propane heaters for comfort in winter, particularly in shops where children help. Even communications and logistics are managed creatively. While most Amish don't have phones in their homes, many districts allow community phone shanties, small, standalone booths located near the road or shared property. These are powered by solar panels or batteries and used for placing business calls, ordering supplies, or dealing with emergencies. True power, freedom through dependence on God, not the grid. When you step back and look at how the Amish power their homes, farms, and businesses without the government, you begin to see that it's not just about electricity. It's about identity. It's about choosing a life where technology doesn't dictate values, where energy doesn't become an idol, and where every use of power reflects a spiritual intention. The Amish don't live without electricity because they can't have it. They live without it because they've chosen something better. That something is freedom, but not the modern kind of freedom that says, I'll do whatever I want. The Amish version of freedom is rooted in obedience, humility, and detachment. By refusing the government grid, they free themselves from monthly bills, from outages, from rate hikes, from surveillance, and from the subtle spiritual erosion that comes when you stop noticing how power shapes your choices. Instead of flipping a switch, they ask, Is this necessary? Will this strengthen or weaken our family? Does it honor God? That process of discernment turns even a diesel generator into a spiritual decision. In a world drunk on consumption and digital convenience, the Amish are a quiet voice whispering, There is another way. It's a way of sacrifice. It's not always easy. In the heat of summer or the dead of winter, when others retreat into climate-controlled comfort, the Amish endure. They rely on design, rhythm, and community. They build homes that breathe naturally. They rise with the sun. They teach their children that hardship can be holy and that real power doesn't come from the wall. It comes from within. And most of all, they believe that by limiting the world's influence, they make more space for God's presence. Their barns and workshops may be lit with propane or battery-powered bulbs, but their hearts are illuminated by something far stronger, conviction. This is how the Amish live without the government's electricity, and in doing so, they show us a deeper truth. You don't need the grid to be powerful. You just need God, discipline, and the courage to live differently.